I have been teaching yoga for over four decades now. One of the very first questions that people ask is, okay, what time should we do yoga? Now that turns out to have an interesting scientific angle to it, what is known as postpandrial hyperemia. That's a mouthful. But let me try to demystify all of that in the context of yoga. <clears throat> so what is exactly this postpandrial hyperemia? Let me explain that in plain English. So postpandrial simply means after a meal. The next question then is how long after a meal is after a meal? In practical terms, we are talking about between one hour and four hours. All the glucose assimilation and so on happens during that time. So the regular prescription is you should wait for some time before you start doing yoga. So let me explain what is meant by hyperemia. Hyperemia strictly speaking, is an active engorgement of your vascular beds inside your stomach. I'll explain that with a picture in one second. Now, what does hyperemia actually mean in plain English? It simply means excess blood flow. So what all of this says is there is an excess blood flow into your stomach after a meal. So let's look at how this thing happens inside the body. So here's a picture of your large intestine and small intestine over here. And this bit here that you see is what is known as superior mesenteric artery. That is what gets engorged after a meal. So essentially what happens is that the blood flow goes into that part after a meal, much more so than it normally does. How much more so? Here's a picture explaining that. So what happens after you eat a meal? First of all, on the left hand side, you can see that your heart rate goes up by about 12 percent what about the blood flow in the artery that i mentioned sma that goes up by 177 percent on the average which is a lot what does that mean well we have a fixed amount of blood circulating in our body what that simply means is there would be less blood flow in other body parts so if you are doing yoga during that time, you will have less blood flow in other body parts where you want the blood flow to happen. And that's the whole point of a yoga. Now, what happens with the blood flow business? Essentially, blood flow implies more oxygen uptake. So more blood flow, more oxygen uptake. So this is the graph that shows how much that relationship holds generally in a body. More blood flow, more oxygen uptake. However, there's another part of that picture that says not only it happens like that, but it also happens in a nonlinear fashion, meaning that there is an end at which this thing tapers off. Namely, more blood flow does not necessarily translate into bigger and bigger oxygen uptake after a point. And that's the key. So coming back to our main point, the executive summary would be practice yoga on an empty stomach. And that's our message. And now this message has been categorically proven 
by the FM, fMRI scan that I mentioned in the previous picture, which we didn't have. All of this will be explained in my forthcoming book called Hormonal Yoga.